Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 6. I'd like to share verses 1 to 8 with you. And then let's talk just for a few minutes today about the crown of life from Jesus Christ. So if you would, hear the word of the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people, either men or women, take a special vow of a Nazarite, setting themselves apart to the Lord in a special way, they must give up wine and other alcoholic drinks. They must not use vinegar made from wine or from other alcoholic drinks. They must not drink fresh grape juice or and they must not eat grapes or raisins. As long as they are bound by their Nazarite vow, they are not allowed to eat or drink anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the grape seeds or skins. They must never cut their hair throughout the time of their vow, for they are holy and set apart to the Lord. Until the time of their vow has been fulfilled, they must let their hair grow long, and they must not go near a dead body during the entire period of their vow to the Lord. Even if the dead person is their own father, mother, brother, or sister, they must not defile themselves, for the hair on their head is the symbol of their separation to God. This requirement applies as long as they are set apart to the Lord. So this Nazarite vow, friends, uh, is to be separated, to be set apart for God's purposes. And, and you know, lots of times it seems like that's a, a temporary thing. And so just, just a quick example here, the Apostle Paul actually enters into a Nazarite vow. We read about that in the book of, of Acts. This is Acts chapter 18 and reading verses 9 to 18. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and told him, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack and harm you. For many people in this city belong to me. So Paul stayed there. That is, he's in Corinth at this point. Paul stayed there for the next year and a half teaching the word of God. But when Gallio became governor of Achaia, some Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him before the governor for judgment. They accused Paul of persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. But just as Paul started to make his defense, Gallio turned to Paul's accuser and said, Listen, you Jews, if this were a case involving some wrongdoing or serious crime, I would have a reason to accept your case. But since it's merely a question of words and names and your Jewish laws, take care of it yourselves. I refuse to judge such matters. And he threw them out of the courtroom. The crowd then grabbed Sosthenes, the leader of the synagogue, and beat him right there in the courtroom. But Gal Gallio paid no attention. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that, then said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and went to nearby Sincrea. There he shaved his head, listen, he shaved his head according to the Jewish custom, marking the end of a vow. Then he set sail for Syria, taking Pr Priscilla and Aquila with him. So what, what appears to have happened is that there in Corinth, Paul became afraid and the, he was a very brave man, uh, but he was a human man and, and there were factors that seemed to have made him afraid. God comes to him, gives him great reassurance. And then, you know, it sure seems that God asked him to, to take a vow to, to essentially agree to stay there in Corinth for some time in ministry. And it sure seems like Paul agreed to this. And it was at this point then that we're reading about it, beginning around verse 18, that God essentially releases him from that, that obligation, says now it's, it's time to move on to the next place. Now, we also see uh, lifetime uh, separation or setting apart uh, in the Nazarite vow for folks like, for instance, Samson. We read about him in the book of Judges. This is Judges 13, 1 to 5. 
Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines who oppressed them for 40 years. In those days, a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan lived in the town of Zorah. His wife was unable to become pregnant and they had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son. So be careful, you must not drink you must not drink wine or any alcoholic drink, nor eat any forbidden food. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. So he is set apart as a lifetime Nazarite. We also see this in the case of, of John the Baptist. So in Luke chapter 1, we read about John the Baptist. This is Luke chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 11. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly." So again, it, it indicates here that, that uh, John the Baptist is set apart for a lifetime Nazarite vow, that these, these are two men who are set apart for lifetime service in this special task. Now, the word that's used in the, in the Old Testament, uh, that's used here in the book of Numbers, is a word, it's nezer. And this is uh, the root word of Nazarite. It's to be set apart, to be dedicated unto the Lord, consecrated to the Lord for His special purposes. Uh, the word actually also is, I think, real interesting, the word also means crown. And it's thought that that has something to do with the growing of the hair, that, that not cutting the hair, letting it grow out is actually kind of a symbolic crown. Uh, and, and a crown not in the sense of, of a symbol of authority as much as uh, a symbol of royalty. That is, a symbol of one who belongs to the king. Now, as we think about ourselves, there are times and seasons, certainly, when God calls us to special service, to a special duty uh, to Him. But the Lord, I, I, you know, I really feel like has impressed on my heart that, that we are actually set apart for a lifetime uh, of service to Him, a lifetime of belonging to Him, and in fact, an eternal identity as those who belong to Christ. We're not under Nazarite vows. As a matter of fact, more importantly, we are we're under the blood of Christ. We are not our own. We are, we are bought at a price. And we are given a crown, friends, because Christ wore the crown of thorns for us. So just as we're moving to a close here, I want to share with you from Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 to 11. This is the Lord's word to the church of Smyrna. He says here, Write this letter to the angel of the church in Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last, who was dead, but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not, because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for ten days, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. 
Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He's saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. So the Lord tells us here that those who remain faithful will receive that crown of life. Paul says in a very similar way that, that he's, he's run the race, that he's, he's, fin- he's fought the good fight, he's finished the race, and that there is this, this crown of righteousness that awaits him. And, and friends, it's not, a, it's not as much a crown of, of authority as, as uh, we know that the Lord has all authority as much as it is a crown of royalty that identifies us as those who belong to the King. We were bought at a price. We are not our own. We are His. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And friends, till we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.